oh, like you're in a cell and there's a guy who comes in, they stick him in your cell and this guy's coughing, he has COVID. You know, um, the CEOs are like, what's the difference between isolation and quarantine anyway? You know, hey. What's up everyone? Today we have a question from Hank Hill. Says, is it better to do Fed time than state time? This is actually a really big question. Um, and it's one that I think a lot of people get wrong. Um, I see on YouTube, like this question asked and answered in a lot of videos. And unfortunately, a lot of people who answer it, you know, are like infographic channels who have actually never done either. Um, and I think it's a massive disservice because the answers they give are nonsensical. Um, they All they do is they list the differences between the two um, and they don't really give a definitive answer on it. So at the end of the day, the, the you know, which one's better? That question is an oxymoron. You know, um, it's like a sharp marble or an honest politician. It just doesn't exist. Um, it's a fairy tale, like a unicorn. Um, so there is no better. Um, and even among like, federal facilities you know you can look at two different institutions and there is no better between them and like people definitely dis disagree with this but i say I, well, how i mean this is i mean over time so it's like at the end of the day right now the only credible reliable person that can tell you about institution xyz or abc are people who have been there very recently and when i say very recently i mean like a week, two weeks, you know, um, here's why. So at the end of the day, if someone hasn't been to that prison in that amount of time and done time there, you know, as an inmate, um, then they're completely unaware of the politics on the yard, um, at that particular place. So for example, you know, if you have a facility and like you're there, you leave, right. For whatever reason. And like two weeks later, a bunch of Serenios come in or a bunch of mass guys come in, or a bunch of DC blacks come in, it's going to totally change the environment of that institution, most likely. Um, it has a big effect on, you know, the people who are in there have a big effect on how things are there. It changes politics. So with that said, um, it's something that switches up. Now, it's not just inmates who make this change and who can make the environment of a prison suck or be really good. Um, it's, it's also the staff, you know, if you have a new captain or a new warden who comes in and takes charge nine times out of 10, from what I've seen, a new warden comes in and they, they want to leave their mark or a new captain leave their mark and they come in and they make all these changes, right? And they get rid of a bunch of different stuff. They, they remove a bunch of programs or they get rid of a bunch of stuff. They remove a bunch of you know, privileges that, that people had. Um, and they to nine times out of 10, they make shit infinitely worse for the people that actually live there, um, which leads to more violence, you know, because people get more fed up. Um, and then that leads to lockdowns, which is like what the people coming in want, you know, um, they want to be able to lock the place down and to show that they have dominance and control is just asinine. Um, but they change the whole environment of that place by their presence and their policies. There's very few times I've seen a new captain or a new warden come in and it's been a positive experience. It's been a good thing. It's just not something that is, is you know, typically normal in a, in a federal institution. Um, so nine times out of 10, it's, it's bad. Um, so, but if I was there two weeks ago and, you know, I, I left two weeks ago and now there's a new warden and they've changed everything up. I don't know shit about that facility because it could be completely different. Or if a bunch of new prisoners have gotten there, I don't know shit about it because it could be completely different. So that's my point. So comparing the two, it's apples and oranges. And even when comparing federal institutions, it's apples and oranges. Now, different security levels are kind of, you know, comparable. Like uh, a USP is, is always going to be worse, you know, than a camp, say. So a high level, you know, security facility compared to a minimum security facility you know um there's always going to be more violence there that's just kind of how those things are it's the nature of the beast so you know things are different between security levels but they're different between locations based on the people that are in there they're they're different um based on the culture of the people that are from there so like you know a prison in atlanta is going to be run 
much different than a prison in New England, uh, you know, in Maine or something. Um, just because the culture of the individuals who work at that facility is completely different. And, you know, the BOP might have these standard policies, but they also have local policies, which allow wardens to kind of dictate, you know, how things go and how things work. So based on that, a lot of, you know, culturistic and, you know, um, you know, individualized rules for that institution exist. So there's that. Um, now, the difference, like me personally, what have I seen? Um, I've seen that like, like county jail. So I was in county in southeastern Mass, which was a nightmare, super violent. Um, and like I hated it. But then I did stay time in Rhode Island at the ACI. And I really kind of liked it. Um, to be, like in comparison to prisons, I'm not saying I like prison. I'm just saying like in comparison to other prisons, it was really nice. They had a lot of like, really good food um like the i mean the place was a pigsty but like it was it was halfway decent food um and that's a huge thing um in a prison um like you have free coffee in the morning you got like uh fruit that wasn't just an, a frozen apple or like the bop you get a, a green orange that's frozen like for like if i hit you in the head with it it's gonna hurt um like you don't you know you don't really see that um there uh the food was a lot better um and the food in county jail and mass was the, was the worst uh it's just horrible um but the sheriff there is just total trash like you had a class action lawsuit he's ripping off inmates and charging them for medical care when he shouldn't and just a douchebag i can't stand that dude um but going back to the the matter at hand like the you know the the difference between all of them is like a you know, a state prison has people who violated state laws, right? And a federal prison has guys who violated federal laws. Most of the people you're going to meet in federal prison, you know, uh, last statistic I saw was 70 some percent were drug offenders. So a lot of these drug offenders um, are sentenced that way because they're doing interstate commerce. They're moving drugs from across borders. That could just be someone with an addiction who goes from to another state. Could be. A lot of the times it's leaders, organizers of drug rings, international drug rings, organized crime, you know, stuff like that. Um, and I like to say it's like in feds, it's a different class of criminal, but like the food is atrocious. Like in, if you Google, um, expired cow hearts, right. You'll find an article with the BOP, like expired cow hearts, BOP, you'll find an article that talks about, you know, how the BOP basically, um, gave and made some like, I want to say it was like 75 million, don't quote me, uh, 75 million pounds of expired cow hearts. Like where you even find 75 million pounds of ex expired cow hearts is you know, a whole nother thing. But like, um, you know, they, they fed this to them because they have no standards. They have no food standards. So like, there's no safety checks for their food. Um, they could buy from whoever, like they're not regulated. The FDA isn't coming in to check. Um, so they give people whatever they want. Like if you look, um, and anyone who's been to federal prison worked in the kitchen, I'm sure they can testify to this depending on where you were, um, the boxes inside the kitchen, you know, they say, uh, printed on the side of them, they say, you know, not for human consumption, you know? Uh, so it kind of tells you, you know, like the <laughs> quality food. Now the BOP at the same time, each meal for them, you know, that they make for an inmate probably costs about three cents, but they claim to in the, if you look in like the federal registrar, um, you'll notice that the BOP claims that it costs $125 per day per inmate, which is really interesting considering the fact that there are like some some camps that have like 500 guys and one CO, and um, the inmates make the clothes, like the inmate, you know, even the face masks, you know, they're they're sewing sewing face masks together, making the inmates make produce you know face masks in bulk to ship out so they don't have to spend it on them. Because they got some, like, people got, like, 3 to $10 million, I forget how much it was. It was some around those numbers um, in COVID relief. And, like, they don't want to spend that money on inmates, you know? Um, they want to buy ridiculous amounts of hand sanitizer, because at the time it was expensive, and bring that home or sell it on eBay. And, like, that's how it works there, you know? Um, it's like, they might, the, a prison might order steak, right? Um, but, like, when they order that steak, they might say it's for inmates, but they're taking, they're going to, they're going to have like a barbecue, a yearly event where they have like a barbecue or like ice cream parties, you know, uh, for staff members. And like, that's what they, 
that's the kind of trash that they spend their money on. Um, and it's just, it's super corrupt. Uh, it's like, you know, a lot of the times they have a saying that's like, you know, no one, no one dies in the feds. Um, and that's because like, if you die in federal prison, a lot of the times what they'll do is they'll take you, they'll put you in a stretcher, they'll put you in an ambulance, they'll get you a hundred yards, you know, down the street away from the prison. And that's when they'll, de they'll declare you dead. Um, she'd actually die in the prison. Um, so it's like a running joke. They're like, you know, no one dies in the feds. <laughs> you know, um, and that's kind of the reality of, of what it is. That's what, that's what those places are like. So like even the COVID numbers that they have, you know, are just ridiculous. You know, I mean, I remember seeing probably close to 40 ambulances leave the facility I was at in one day. Um, and like at the time they're like, we don't have any COVID cases. <laughs> it's like, you know, um, you're in shit. Like I was, I was leaving from the facility I was at to go to camp and I, they send you to, um, isolation. Um, and like, it's like isolation or quarantine and isol isolation is supposed to be if you have COVID or COVID symptoms, you're away from everyone while quarantine is just, you're waiting a certain amount of time to do something, to go to a unit or transfer or whatever. So you have like a set period of time to wait. The COs didn't know the difference. So like you could have COVID. So like you could be in a cell and all of a sudden there's a dude who, you know, like you're in quarantine, so you don't have COVID. You're just, it's just a holdover period. But like you're in a cell and there's a guy who comes in, they stick him in your cell and this guy's coughing, he has COVID, you know? Um, the CEOs are like, what's the difference between isolation and quarantine anyway? You know, it's just like, these are the people who you, you know, hope, you know, know enough that they don't kill everyone. And like, unfortunately, like a lot of people die. Um, you know, um, like my facility was, it's ranked one of the top five for deaths, um, COVID. It's just no joke. Uh, and like, I would be in, and I would be in there and it's shoe. So solitary confinement. So you get this little ass window and I had to like stand up on my tippy toes to see because I'm short. Um, but like I would see dudes like getting wheeled out and then like they're not breathing. The lungs will collapse like bad, you know, bad stuff, man. You know, people, people dying. And, and that's like, it's legitimate. Like, so they just don't care. And the feds have it down to a science, you know, on how to manipulate, lie and, and, you know, screw paperwork over to make it look like, you know, it's really nothing. Um, there was actually a CO who was just found guilty. Um, this dude was handcuffed, mentally ill dude, handcuffed. I, I posted this article on doingfedtime.com, but um, he was like handcuffed in a cell, in isolation, and like he was making noise. And I was there like around this half. Like, like they went in, a lieutenant and this other cop went in and they beat this dude half to death. You know, like broke his jaw and shit. Like, dude, he's in restraints, he's handcuffed. And he was mentally ill. Um... And afterwards, like the lieutenant went back and deleted the footage. He deleted the tape that it was saved. It's like, this is the level of corruption. Um, I think the lieutenant was found not guilty, but the other officer was found guilty. So, but like usually that's rare, you know? Um, but my point is like, that's kind of the level of corruption that you're dealing with in the feds. They have an over, you know, a hundred year track record of perfecting this system. Um, and I mean, the state it's, it's no different. Um, uh, but like in the state, your inmates or your convicts are a lot different. There's a massive difference between those two things. But like you have, um, you know, in the feds, I like to say they're get money guys because a lot of them are there for getting money um, and making money on an international or national type level. Whereas like you're not like you're not going to really see, you know, rapists in feds you you will like you know they they traveled interstate or stuff like that or you know sold it for money but like you don't really see that as much you don't see like you still have individual gang members all that kind of stuff but like you're going to see you know higher level people um so like a lot of times the state if the state has inmates that they can't handle they give them to the feds so that gives you an idea of like what it's like there um you know, you have something like 2.3 million people incarcerated at any given time in this country, and only 150,000 of those are federal inmates. So what's that tell you? You know, um, you look at it as like the worst of the worst, or the cream of the crop. <laughs> it depends on your viewpoint on that. Um, but I 
I would rather do, you know, from, from the state I was in. Again, from the state I was in. Every state is different. Every prison in every state is different. But, like, at the end of the day, from what I saw, I would infinitely rather do time in state prison than in federal prison. And I would rather do time um, in federal prison than in county. Because county sucks. There's nothing, nothing to do with jail, you know. And there's a massive difference between jail and prison. Um, and I would rather be in prison any day uh, of the week. There's a lot less people withdrawing. There's, it's just a it's more stable almost. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hit that like button um, and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video.